Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a candle review, a singular candle to review with you, for you, and a little story time. Um, I waited for this particular candle, and you'll understand why in a few moments. First of all, what's on my lips, it is a combination that you've seen many times before, but I love it. I'm actually on my way very shortly to my friend Brita's 40th birthday party. I'm super, super excited, super stoked. So I'm gonna be at their place in like an hour or so. So that's why I'm kind of done up more than like normal. <laughs> so anyway, this is a travel size or a deluxe size sample in Lovecraft, which is a Kat Von D lipstick that I love. It's a really nice cool tone or mauve. And then on top, Buxom's Dolly. So I love that combination. And as far as my nails, I just got them done. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, all my links are down below, but um, these are just Fun. I don't know the colors. There's like slight marblings with gold glitter through it in parts of it and like an oil slick. I love it. Anyway, moving on. The reason why you're actually here. And yes, I'm in front of the camera and there is actually daylight out. I know a lot of people keep saying, oh, I miss you being uh, in front of the camera, but just my lifestyle is just so go, go, go. And that by the time I've actually stopped and sit down and like have time to film it's dark out and I don't have ring lights or anything like that behind what's behind you right now is natural light it is uh, 4 15 p.m. Um, in the summertime so with that said that is why I'm behind the camera a lot or you know on the other side of the camera anyway I am going to be discussing the I know it's old sorry I've got like something on my under my eye it's been discussed so much, um, but it's Bath and Body Works Cannoli and Chocolate, also known as Italy Candle. And you can see I burnt below the 50% mark. Bath and Body Works describes this candle as uh, fresh cannolis, dustings of sugar, and um, chocolate. I still, I'm gonna be 40 in a month. I've yet to have a cannoli. I don't even know what it tastes like. I know what it looks like on TV. I can imagine what it smells like, that kind of thing, but I don't know. I've, I've even been to Italy, which again, I'll be discussing a little little story time at the end of this, so you can click out if you don't want story time. Um, but a little, you'll learn a little bit more about uh, me um, towards the end of this video. So, oh my God, this is really bothering me. I'm sorry I'm touching my face. My apologies. Anyway, this is, uh, this candle I had, put it on my counter waiting for another candle to burn because I'm like, you know, I don't want to burn so many at one time. So, and all I was finding to do itself is when it was brand new, never burned, I was like, it's always sniffing it. It smells delightful on coal, like to the point where I actually bought three of these candles because um, I'm coal. I'm like, I knew I loved it. And that was right when they first came out. And that's when the world of candle lovers they couldn't get enough of this candle and people were having a really hard time finding it things like that so I was happy to have been able to purchase three let's put it that way so okay so on cold a 10 out of 10 percent appeal it was a perfect bakery there was no ooey gooey caramel cinnamon thank goodness it is strictly like you definitely get like um feel like a pastry note not pie crust but a nice phyllo pastry type light fluffy uh, baked good and definitely get a chocolate note now I because I'm really late to the game and I did watch other people haul their stuff I will have to agree with those who did mention it's more like a I don't consider this scent on cold a, a baked chocolate chip cookie I'm more like this is chocolate chip cookie dough like straight up you've mixed all the ingredients together you've got the sugar you've got all the other stuff you got chocolate chips and it definitely smells like cookie dough to me so scent appeal and cold 10 out of 10. burning it did really really well um the rope the ropes the wicks are really thick now i can't tell if that's doing it justice but compared to so many Bath and Body Works candles that I burned recently, the rope, these are very rope-like, very thick. You can even feel it when I took my proper um, candle trimmer, my wick trimmer, you could feel it. Like it was not a struggle, but it was definitely not as easy as some of the other wicks have been to cut. So burning was pretty good up until about, um, I'd say probably about halfway actually, until about here. See if I can. Yeah, it's really hard to see. 
Mind you, there's no um, sooting so far, but uh, to about halfway, and then I noticed the last two times I burnt it, it started smelling burnt. Not kerosene, but you burnt a cookie. You burnt a cookie, and then you took the cookie off the baking sheet, and rather than cleaning off the baking sheet, you just added more cookies in, onto the baking sheet to cook that in the oven. And now not only are you cooking the fresh dough that you just put in there, but you're cooking the already burnt up pieces of cookie that were on it before, but you didn't clean it off. And it's almost a bitter smell, like, you know, burnt, not that this smells like burnt toast, but the bitter taste um, when you burn cookies on the bottom, you can, you can taste it. I don't burn cookies too often, but if I'm giving them out for friends, I keep the ones that are a little bit more dark, I'd say. I don't like to give out to my friends that are like darker. Um, Cause I'm like a perfectionist. <laughs> Gee, can you tell? Um, so with that said, I had to stop burning this. I actually blew this out this morning and I'm like, that's it. Um, no more burning. I'm not even, this is beyond the point for a candle crock, it's beyond that, it's the smell, like you can see, it's it's gone right to the see. You can see where it pulled out. I mean, the scent would be pretty much where it had pulled out. Now, I do have another one, so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna chop up the other one and just melt it when I want to in my warmers, in likely my great room here, and I've had nothing but amazing uh, experiences with uh, Bath and Body Works candles chopped up and melted. I have a huge playlist on my channel. There is a chopping playlist. You will see that. You'll see how it's done. But anyway, back to this candle here. Um, and first of all, I forgot to show you guys the lid. So it's like a two-tone. It's almost like a black and white cookie. Like you got you dip half and it looks different. Dip the other half looks different. It's it is what it is. It's fine. Um, so overall, the throw and the scent was great up and a slightly a bit too sweet for me. So with melting it, like chopping it up and melting it, I can also melt it with maybe something like a little less sweet, like um, uh, chocolate sweet. If I wanted to warm it up with more of a cookie scent, I can do that by just adding different wax. So that's why I also like chunking up candles as well, so I can mix things. Um, the burn. Up until that point, I would have given it an eight out of 10. Then it got yucky at halfway, so now it drops to about a three out of 10. I'm not burning this anymore. I'm retiring this candle as is. I still adore the scent on cold, and I know I'll love it when it's melted on my warmers uh, throughout my home when I do decide to chop up one of the candles, one of the other ones I've picked up and use it. So uh, that is my review. I, I wouldn't repurchase anymore. I bought enough. But if I ever were to repurchase, I likely wouldn't be repurchasing for the sake of burning. I would likely purchase in the future to melt, to chop up and melt. So there's the review on that. Um, okay, so a little bit of story time. Now, what's interesting is my channel, as you know, you were watching it. Um, it's Canada Kim 1978. I have a much longer story uh, that goes a happens to be about a boy but anyway I went to Italy uh, and to, was been Christmas and New Year so 2006 2007 that I was there and I never went to any big city which I love I love the rural like real farming communities of course I love history but my history is I love taking photographs make them black and white of things like steps were hundreds of years of wear, um, just to think of how many people have walked over those steps versus all the hustle and bustle and the people. People bother me sometimes when I'm in a huge crowd. It's like I'm used to being on the other side, containing people from coming over. Um, so for me to be on the side where all the people are pushing, I, <laughs> mm. po pokiest part of my body right here is my elbow and I'm not afraid to use it. So anyway, Going back to the story, I stayed in a small town called Sant'Angelo in Pontano. It's in the are on the Adriatic side. Seafood was like seafood was the big type of meal. Like the, the seafood was very prevalent in their pastas dishes. And by the way, there is nothing like pasta in Italy. Proper pasta that isn't dripped with sauce. Let me tell you so good simplicity is so much better you guys if you haven't traveled if you can travel travel you will realize that what we north americans think is italian food really is not italian food 
that go off to a place like Italy and in different regions, just like in your own country, wherever you're from, there are different regions and there are different specialties. Um, and anyway, my region specialty was a lot of seafood, so I ate a lot of seafood. But be keeping in mind, I was in this tiny little farming community where a lot of people were farmers and they have these big pieces and parcels of land where typically their house was on the top of a mound that went down that you see in all those photographs and their driveway is super long. You got wild boar at nighttime as soon as the moon comes up, they're running around like crazy. That was, oh my God, one of, one of them, like a whole family of them almost trampled our car. It was hilarious, but anyway, um, one of the occasions I thought, I'm not your typical girly girl and I had really blonde hair at the time, more so than I have now. I was much younger, a little cuter than I am, 40 year old self. We're talking 2006, a while ago, right? Anyway, I wanted to go into the bar. So there is the small town that I'm in, there's one bar, there's one police officer, which I actually got invited to his home and met his wife and his son and daughter. Um, I, Cause I brought up, I brought something from Canada for a policing thing for, to trade. And, and the biggest file of the day was how a dog was attacking a sheep. Like I kind of like, I kind of had to keep that to myself. Like I'm chuckling inside going, oh my God, that's your biggest thing. But I get it. Farming, and I know there's farming here. I mean, that does happen here, but I'm thinking, well, well you would not want to go to where I'm, where, where I'm from. So um, I'm sure a few of you guys can relate. So anyway, um, I decided to go to the bar. I'm like, I'm gonna go to the bar. It's not a girl, it's not a woman thing to do over there, but I'm like, I'm the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Kim, right? So anyway, I would go to the bar the first time and I sort of tested the waters out. Turns out the lady that was serving drinks on the other side of the bar was from Quebec, here in Canada. She had married an Italian in that town. And so that was really cool. Most of the men didn't speak a lot of English. I didn't speak a lot of Italian, but you know what? There's food and there's drink and there's breaking bread and that's where people, it doesn't matter. Music, all that stuff, it comes out. Um, your personality comes out. By the time I had gone the first time and then I went two more times, I was there for a couple weeks. I went a couple more times and by the end of it, because they didn't speak a lot of English, they called me Canada Kim, hence my channel name. So I had always had this thought of if I ever did a YouTube channel or whatever it might be, that's exactly what I would call it because these people did not speak, these men did not speak English hardly at all, um, but that's what they related me to that I'm from Canada, my name is Kim. And so I just threw my year of birth behind that for the YouTube channel. But I wanted to share with you guys kind of a little more in depth as to why I chose my channel name when I did. I was going through a really, really rough time while I was there. Um, maybe that might be story time another time, but I don't want to take away from the wax, like my wax community. Um, but if you ever want to hear a story about that, um, yeah, yeah, it's always about a boy, right? I have the worst luck. And yeah, I'm the common denominator. Trust me, I'm the first person to tell you I'm the common denominator. But dear goodness, like, geez, where are you? <laughs> I've, like, stopped looking. So, hey, maybe when I'm in Texas. No, just joking. Um, but anyway, long short of it is I could do a quick little story time. I might play around with uh, something down the road as well and see how that translates for you guys. And if that's something you'd like, um, I don't know about makeup tutorials because I need lighting and things like that and I don't have ring lights and stuff, but story time can be pretty much done, you know, anytime and I don't have to be done up like this. I could be look like crap, which is what I normally look like every day anyway. So. Anyway, on that note, that is a review of this candle and a little something about me to share to all of you uh, about kind of why I chose my YouTube name. And I wish I could have used that exact spelling that I use for my YouTube to my Instagram, but somebody had already taken it, which is weird. So Canada there is what's spelled with a K, but otherwise the same. So that is it, you guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and as always you guys be safe take care and have fun and stay tuned Ramona and I are like we're in cahoots about this trip to Dallas it's going to happen it's it is a hundred percent going to happen she's booked her holiday time I'll be booking my holiday time 
um, we are just nailing down a date to be in Dallas. So stay tuned if you are interested in being able to come or what have you. So, and if you're a vendor, contact me because likely I might be talking to you and seeing, you know, if vendors want to come, I want them, I want this to be like a wax community thing. I would love for them, uh, one or two or all of them, heck, all of them, if you're able to come, that would be amazing. Just, you know, talk about we all, what we all love right? We might have questions for you as well as vendors. So, okay. Anyway, stopping now. As always, be safe, take care, and have fun. Bye, guys.